Hey everybody, it's Seth and Paul with Everything Money Channel. On this episode right now, Paul talks about rehabbing your real estate units, what to put into a unit, what you can get out of it, the pros and cons, mostly pros, of making your real estate unit one of the best places on the block. Only pros. Only pros. What what are the downsides to it? Right now on the Everything Money Channel, let's do this baby. Paul, I want to dive into real estate. We don't we, we, we talk both real estate, stocks, investments. And with real estate, you know, this is something that's near and dear to my heart. Even though I don't own any, I'd really like to. And you and I have been going over some deals of the week. If you watch our past episodes, we go over some real estate deals. And you've sent me some deals. Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm getting in the flow of it now, you know, getting some I'm uh, getting some realtors, some wholesalers to send me some deals so I can at least look at them. But one thing that I can't grasp as a normal person, I think we probably need help with, is how do you take a property? I think initially you always look at a property and say, well, I can get X rent out of it. And I'm always like, how? Like you always think you can get 20%, 25%, 30% more rent out of the same unit. And I I think it comes down to, well, we know it comes down to rehabbing the unit. And so give us your thoughts on, you know, on any property you get, what is the mindset of going in and making this place a much better place to live in, attracting better clientele, and and thus getting more rent and better profits out of it? Okay, so... When I first started in real estate 15 years ago, I remember having the mentality of, I wanna advertise the lowest rent, keep my rents competitive, keep them low, and make sure I get it full, right? Yeah, yeah. Then, um, what happened? Something happened where we were just wasting our time handling just garbage applications, right? Uh huh. And I remember reading a book sometime about just in general, charge, actually it might have been, oh, I hate to say it, Donald Trump's book where he talked about, or an article, or he was talking about, they once had a building where the units were just sitting stagnant. They weren't selling. He goes, suddenly we upped the price and they just flew off the shelves. Now Mm. I think what had happened was, and this is a side tangent, I think the price went to a level where it became the lowest price of the next level. So it looked like the value deal for the next level up. So like, for example, you list your price for 995, now you're the most expensive six-figure home. You list it for a million fifty, you're the least expensive seven-figure home. Oh, okay. I think it was one of those situations. But what we started to see in our properties was the most responsible people were paying the most, doing the less damage. And it was kind of one of those things oh. where we're like, okay, wait a second. Our mentality shouldn't be get the cheapest rents. Our mentality should be get the highest rents. I wonder... Um if you're in a business, comment below if you sort of feel this this uh, these sentiments too. I guess I'm in the wedding photography business. I feel the same way, Paul. Yes, you do. When you're in this this uh, when you're trying to be the lowest, you you then attract a clientele that they want more deals, they want more for their money. Um, I, I've moved myself into maybe a more of a luxury position, and the clientele I get they're incredible. They don't they don't ask for ridiculous things. They don't ask for. But Just, you still need to provide better service if you're charging more. And, and yeah, we do. So, so, so go into that. And How that's you, the big thing. Mm-hmm. You know, when I tell, you know, we, we had, I had a friend before, well, I still have a friend, and he has a business, and he'd always want to say, I want to be the most expensive. But I started to see his, his, his customer service, and I'm like, yeah. And I don't have the heart to tell him, like, listen, your customer service and your price don't match. You know what I mean? What we were just talking about right now, uh, my house, not having internet. Yeah. I'm literally going to pay triple to this person than what I paid another person, but they were holding my hand. They came in, they did all these things. And I'm like, yeah, I don't mind paying triple. Mm-hmm. Why? Because the person I paid a third to, it's hard to get in touch with them, et cetera. And it's like, okay, this person's going to put better quality products in, et cetera. So if you don't mind paying triple, go ahead, folks. If you do mind, smash that like button in the bottom right corner. I would have to say, Paul, that if you're watching other shows like ours that are incredibly scripted, this is Paul and I walking in about four minutes ago and talking. I think I really smoked that intro, Paul. But in reality, <laughs> like Paul really knows his stuff. He's not reading off cards. This is all going to be off the top of his head, how to analyze and rehab a property. And if you love that, smash the like button. And the pretty, only please. time we ever repeat is when one of us forgets to hit the record button. That's right. Or we find out a camera's not on, which, by the way, all the cameras are cameras on. Are good. good. Um, so keep so going. So anyhow, we try to focus on getting the highest rents in an area. A lot of people will tell me banks don't like hearing that. Well, that's why banks are stupid. Mm -hmm. Are we going to, you know, you need to always get the top because the top quality rents will get the top quality renters. They'll do less damage to your property. When you put more money in your property, you have less maintenance issues. All these things are these little small things here and there that make your property better. Mm -hmm. You should always want to have the most. Our goal, when we always tell people, we don't care what street we're on. We want the highest rents on that street. 
Yeah, if it's I've a Class that. C area, I don't care. I want the highest runs in the Class C. If it's a Class B area, I want the highest runs in the Class B. Class A, unfortunately, it's hard to be, get the highest rents because it usually goes to the newest property, the most amenities, et cetera. But in those areas, Class B and C, we just want the highest rents. How do we do this? Okay, so first I want to show why it's important to rehab and how you make a big return on your money. So I'm going to show an exact property we bought and what happened. But I'm going to make it, so I'm going to, I'm going to sit there and say, we bought 100 units in Columbus in 2015. This is our best real estate deal ever. I, I, I consider it our best real estate deal ever. When we bought it, the average rent was 540 a month. What'd you buy this for? Okay, now this is, this is a property. For those of you who are haters, I paid full ask price. Okay. I bought it for $2.75 million. Seems like a lot of money. Full ask. It's only 27500 a unit. Okay. Now. It's not bad. What I want to tell you, it's very important. At five forty a month in rent, this did not make sense. At the time. 2.75 was way overpaying. Mm. If I just bought it on the rents in place, and this is what I'm trying to tell people, and they say, oh, it's not worth it. My analysis isn't based on... Current rent. Yeah, and you know, I, there's a joke in my group chat where they say, Paul thinks the property's asking $3 million, He thinks it's worth a million. I paid full ask price. You know what else I did? I also gave him $50,000 day one and said, if I ever leave the deal, you can keep it. Mm-hmm. So that's how confident I was in the deal. Why did you have this confidence? It was all two-bedroom townhomes. We like that. So why did I have the confidence? That's a great question. Mm-hmm. I had a property about 300 yards away where a two-bedroom townhome that wasn't as nice a property, I was getting $750 a month in rent. Not five seventy-five. Not five forty. Five forty. Sorry. That's what I was getting. Five forty. This property had a pool, had its own separate entrance. It was it was a beautiful property. So we thought to ourselves, okay, what can we put in this property? What can we get the rents to? Mm-hmm. We initially bought it thinking we can get eight hundred. So what we did was, we ended up investing eighteen thousand dollars per unit in the property. Okay. Now. Seems like a lot. It is a lot. For a two-bedroom. We put granite countertops. We put backsplat. We put... It was beautiful. Mm-hmm. It is not what the area commanded. How we long d- How long did this flip take? This took three years of rehab because when we bought it, it was 96% full. At 540 rent, of course it was. So we couldn't even start rehabs for six months pretty much because it was kind of like, all right, get the people out, et cetera. Do you want um, 90% occupancy or... Our goal is to get... Our goal is to have a healthy balance where we're always fluctuating close to 90%, maybe a little bit above that. So, all right, tell me about this 18K. What into it? Guess what we got? So, we got granite. Actually, the whole unit was full top to bottom rehab. We did new drywall in areas. We did new tile floors, bathrooms, vanities, light figure, everything, light for everything we did. It was brand spanking new. Mm-hmm. We did new exterior lights, new HVAC, everything for $18,000 a unit. Now, you might be sitting there out there saying, wait, uh, my contractor quoted me $25,000. Yeah, because your contractor's got to make money. He's got crews. He's got overhead, et cetera. Yes. We handled this all in-house. Now, for those of you out there, forget about the fact that it's 100 units. You could consider it to be five units. It's the same numbers either way. Uh-huh. Don't worry about the number of units I'm dealing with. Forget about the fact that mine's 100 units. Oh, okay, so if I have a five unit or five four units, unit, put fine. 18. Okay, it doesn't matter. It. It's the exact same numbers. We're going to do it on a per unit basis. Per unit, I put $18,000 unit in there. Where did my rents go to, Seth? You tell me. 865. From 540? From 540. That's an increase of $325. So. Now you need to be able to calculate, okay, how much did I make off my 18? I put $18,000 in there. Yeah, that's a lot. Of, that, that's going to take a long time to pay off, eh? Right. right. Now, let's go to the next screen. So if I have a unit now, it's getting $325 more per month. What is that per year? That's uh, 5000 bucks, six, 4000 bucks. Uh, it's about Yeah, it's about $3,900. Okay. Okay, let's take out a vacancy, right? There's going to be a vacancy on this. Let's take out a 10%. Mm-hmm. So let's call it, so that's $3,500 in my pocket in rent. Now let me ask you a question, Seth. Does this unit cost me more or less or the same before I rehab it versus after to operate it? I, you were saying it costs less. It's a little bit less. Let's assume it's the same. Okay. So how much is this $3,500 is profit? Uh, well, we'd have to take out a bunch of stuff. Well, why? Because the, the, I already covered the cost in the 540 oh. I'm collecting. How much more is it costing me to operate this unit when I get $3,500 more rent a year? Oh, Nothing. 
zero. Oh. This is all profit. Hmm. I, now, it's not 100% profit, but let's, let's assume it's pretty close. Okay. Okay. What's the cap rate, Seth? Remember? It's cap a, rate. Yeah, the, the cap rate is a, it's a rate of return if we paid cash. Yep. So if a cap rate in this area is 7%, that means for every dollar I increase my value, I can divide that by 7%. What is $1 divided by 7%? Oh, gosh. Can you seven, do your math in your calculator, please? $1 divided by 7%? Yeah, it's like 14.5%. It's like $14.5, but look it up exactly. Okay. 14.57. I'm going to be a little cocky here. 14.28, dickhead. Fuck. 14.28. So okay. for every dollar I increase my, my property income, I'm generating $14 in value Wow! per year. So if I generate 3,500 times 14.28, what does that equal? $50,000. I created $50,000 in value in that unit. You just lost me. Do it and, again. And I spent 18,000. For a profit of $32,000 total. Okay. So remember, we value a property based on a cap rate. The cap rate is net income mm-hmm. divided by price. Mm-hmm. Okay. If that is 7%, that means for every $1 we increase our value by, increase- our, our, our profit by, Profit, profit, not oh, Sorry, value. profit by, profit. we're increasing our value by one divided by 0.07. Trust me on those numbers. I, you know, without getting into the details of it, people are here going to be like, wait, what are you saying? It's just know that for every dollar you increase at a seven cap, you're increasing your value by 1428. So you want to sit there and spend as little as possible to get that 1428, right? Okay. I created $50,000 in value. I paid 18,000 to get it. I made $32,000 for that value times 100 units equals 3.2 million. What is this time frame of this creation of 50,000? It, it all depends. So the 50,000 is one unit. And how much time it takes you to rehab one unit? That whole property, it took me three years to do. Okay. But still, three years to make 5 million in value investing of 1.8 million. So that's the, that's, the, that's the next level. So I did, I did $18,000 a unit times 100 units. Uh-huh. 1.8 million. Yes. But I created $50,000 in value. Per unit? Per unit times 100, 5, 5 million. million. So what's my profit? My profit is a 5 million minus... 3.2. Three, yeah, exactly. Wow. Now, I don't care how many units you have. Uh-huh. Call it 10 units. Well, your commas are all mixed up now, but... Still. Call it 10 units. 180,000... 500,000 in profit, 320 grand, $500,000 in value, 320,000 in profit. Call it one unit. Mm-hmm. Really? One unit? You can do it on one unit. I mean, listen, it's, it, we do it for our houses. We do it for our houses. We'll put $18,000 in a house to get $300. A- that's absolutely. The point. Absolutely. So, when we're, so the point of the rehabbing is people always out there when they buy real estate want to get the cash flow. I think it's a bad idea. Because don't take the cash flow in and live off of it. Take the cash flow and invest back in your property. That's the point of it. That's how you get the higher returns. Mm-hmm. Now, this property is making 42% returns a year for us because of this. Yeah, it's our best real estate deal ever. Hmm. Because we also, I mean, these are the things that you can do in real estate. When people tell me they want to build a portfolio of 20 or 30 units so they can have an extra lifestyle, I go, Why? Use it, build the value, put every single dollar of cash flow. This is what I always tell people. Every dollar of cash flow needs to go back into your property to increase the value through increased rent or decreased expenses. Mm-hmm. Decreased expenses. That never crossed my mind. Of course. Like, let's say, for example, Seth, you're putting in $2,000 a year in a, in a roof. You're like, oh my God, my roof is $2,000 a year. Or you can spend ten grand and fix the, the problem forever. Yeah. For 20 years. I'm thinking of um, like the, the, the general maintenance inside yep. of... Carpet versus hard tile or Correct. or crappy. Um, I would think you know, crappy uh, appliances that were going to break. Correct. These are all the things that you'd be looking at. But most people look at real estate and say, "Oh, great! I'm cash flowing five hundred dollars a month off this unit. I'm going to go buy a car with it." No. Is this for long term wealth building or is this for today? You got to decide. I will say this: I've never met anybody who lives off their real estate who had good real estate thirty years later. 
it was always crappy real estate. Mm -hmm. The people I saw reinvesting, which was very few, have the best real estate and they have the best retirements. Because over the years, now that $2.75 million property is worth now $7.75 million for me. Right? And I invested 2.75 plus 1.8, 4.55. So I'm sitting on $3 million, $3.2 million in profit. Is that in my pocket? No, it's in the value. But someday when I sell it, when it's worth $10 million, I'm going to realize that profit and some. So my net worth has gone up and people are always worried about like, oh, my tax, doesn't matter. Your net worth needs to go up. It's a tax deferred net worth. I'm worth $3 million more not paying any, any taxes. Yeah. If you did it on one unit, you're worth $32,000 more not paying any taxes. But you're getting that cap. And by the way, oh, and that's even better. Forget about that. Don't forget that. Your cash flow increased. Because now you're getting eight sixty five in rent times 12. Call it... Let's, let's just make it easy. We'll call it 10000 a year. 10338 10380 And let's say the unit costs $4,700 to operate. You're at... 5680 5680 When before, you're getting 540 a year in rent equals 6480 80. mm-hmm. And it costs you the same $4,700. 1780 Your cash flow incre- tripled. Your cash flow tripled. Wow. By rehabbing. So you put the money, you laid out the money up front, but your cash flow triples and your net worth goes up and your property value goes up. You get better tenants, you have lower expenses. This has to be, I think the one uh, argument to this, which I have heard from real estate owners is that this is location based. You cannot do granite in the middle of these really, really bad places. I'm in a class C area when I did that granite. Literally a class C area. When I say class C, that's being a little generous. Like there are crime issues in that area. Mm-hmm. And we're 94%, 96% full right now. We have four vacancies at 865 in rent. Amazing. So what's by the way, the, not all areas can get granite. But I always tell people, what's the granite countertop versus, you know, sometimes people sit there and say, oh, let's double the price. But my comment is, okay, I'll, I'll, listen, I'll see a class A property in Beechwood and they have the same vinyl floors that we put in this property. Mm-hmm. Or you have a light fixture that's fifteen dollars versus forty, and they'll be like, "Well, fifteen. I'll take the 15. I'm like, "It's twenty five dollars more." Yes, it's almost triple, but we're talking about twenty five dollars. This will wow your tenant. Uh-huh. This will not. Why are we arguing over twenty five? Yes, at the end of the day, you got to look at percentages. Yeah. You also have to look at total dollars. When a granite countertop costs a thousand, and a regular one costs six hundred with labor, or not six hundred, call it four hundred. You're looking at six hundred dollar difference. Is that a lot? Yeah, and over hundred units, it adds up. How often are you going to replace a granite countertop? Never. How often are you going to replace a Home Depot, you know, shitty um countertop? Yeah. I'm sorry. To me, it's a no brainer. What's the take home for viewers if they have a property and they're looking to rehab or they're looking to invest? Figure out what you think you can get for the property in rents. Go look at the comps in the area. Always look at the comps and say, okay, if these people look like this and they're getting X. What do you think people will get? And there are some areas where you can't get higher rent. I mean, like, for example, in that area, we're not going to get 1500 no matter what we do. We're not getting 1500 ever. We're not getting 1200 ever. Yeah. Not ever, but it'll take 20 years. Sure. Then decide for yourself, are you okay sacrificing today for tomorrow? The biggest thing I'm always teaching people is don't, I've been saying this for 10 or 15 years, do not live off your real estate income. That's why we started other businesses. Yeah. The only time, and I'm not kidding, the only time we take a distribution on our real estate income is when our accountant says, I'm not trying to be cocky. You guys made too much money this year in real estate. You need to pay yourself a distribution because the IRS wants their payroll taxes. Okay. We don't pay a distribution. We pay ourselves like a payroll out of it. Mm -hmm. That's the only time we do it. So you have to decide, do you want a higher value property and more cash flow, or do you just want it? And you're going to have less hassles. You're going to have better quality tenants. Trust me on this one. Everybody thinks the opposite. Never advertise your lowest price. Advertise your top price. You know Why? You know that the people calling you on your top price are qualified people. If you were going to go out there and rent an apartment today, would you go look for the cheapest apartment? No. Why? If your child was going to go look for an apartment today, would you let them go to the, to the worst no. to the cheapest? Of course not. Mm-hmm. Be the highest price on the street. Go get your And the people we're talking to here, I have 100 units. I have to have crews. You can do that yourself. Seth, you can probably do this rehab yourself. It might take you a little bit longer. Yeah. That $18,000 you spent, how much was it labor? At least ten. Oh, Wow. So if you're doing it yourself, 
Yeah, you're going to save 10,000 bucks, but you're paying yourself $10,000 to do that work then. Yeah, yeah. So I look at that going like, damn, like, well, well, I wish, I mean, I always tell people, if, I, if my desires weren't to be, or to have 10,000 units, I'd be a home flipper and just buy apartments four or five units at a time, rehab them and sell them. Because you'll find somebody who'll buy this from you all day. They want to buy beautiful properties that are turnkey ready to go. Mm. All day. Turn that key on your hand. Press the like <laughs> button. Subscribe. Paul, that was incredible. I'm learning a lot. If I'm the only viewer, thank you. <laughs> Hopefully we have a lot more viewers now. I'm learning a lot. We do. Uh, we, we appreciate the support, y'all. Uh, tell your friends about us. Yeah, like, please like forward this video because this is a video that a lot of people, I think, would have a lot of value in showing because a lot of people talk about real estate and, oh, I want to buy this property and just sit on it and you know, no, no, just rehab it. I mean, not just operate it as is. And I'm like, no, go put the money. Mm -hmm. Is this our best deal ever? Yes. If we usually invest 18000 in a property, what do we want to get in rent increase? Two fifty. We got 300 and some. That was a fluke. I mean, that's why I went and paid ask price. Yeah. Literally, I was just like, I remember looking at the broker. The broker was actually Josh at the time. He was the broker of the deal. I go, Josh, he was in Mexico with me. I go, Josh, what can you tell me what it's going to take to get this deal mine right? It literally, this would happen. It was the most lucrative Mexico trip ever because I'd never gone to Mexico with them. He, I would have never gotten this deal. He just goes, he called the owner. The owner said, if you, do, if you pay ask price, it's going to be 50000 day one deal. I go, deal, let's do this. That's what it was. Interesting. It was great. Thanks for joining us. Everything Money on YouTube.